different from the orientation that we had in Accra. The reason being this, uh, the orientation we had to invite ministers to share with them government policies. They needed to know government policy. So they didn't have in-depth knowledge about the decentralization and the local government sector where today they find themselves. That's the more reason why they brought experts in different areas to come interact with them. Most who haven't worked for about three months, they might have learned some skills. And so when they are interacting with experts in those fields, they will be able to now really understand the issues at stake. When they came for the orientation, you know about half of them were fresh. Out of the 260 then, Almost 129 were fresh, you understand? Meaning the about half, and that we needed to bridge the gaps, you know, between those who have been reappointed and the new one. It was a bit challenging. So right now, this is called a classroom work. You saw the questions that they were to answer before we go and discuss. That's what we're going to do within these three days. So it is quite different. I believe that this time round, we're going to delve into very many issues uh, on procurement, for instance, human resource, works, finance, uh, and others. That's the more reason why we have zoned them so that there will not be too many. On the average, about 66. Today, Western region, Eastern region, Central, they are actually 69. And then uh, next week, uh, in Sunyani, uh, that will be another zone. Greater Accra, Uti, East uh, Volta will be in Ho, and the five northern regions with Brun East will be in Tamale. So four zones on the average six or six that we're going to uh, work with. We need to bring the synergy between the DCs and the staff. Well, the DC cannot do much without the entire staff. I want to talk about leadership in the various MMDAs. Is the DCs and the district coordinating directors? The DC, as per Act 936 and the 1990 Constitution, is both the administrative and executive head of the assembly. The coordinating director, in a way, is also an administrative head. And for that matter, there's a need for a synergy between these two and also amongst the staff. Today, for instance, I hear a lot of DCs, their staff are not doing well, this and that. It's incumbent on us to also make sure that the staff are very professional to work with the chief executives. It's only through this that we can achieve the Ghana that we want. MMDCs are appointed. We have this uh, orientation that is held for them. Um, they all come to Accra. This year, we did that. L last year, for that matter, we did that. And then we had about, you know, about over 130 new ones. So after the general orientation for all the, uh, about 258 of them, we had special session for the new ones at the Institute of Local Government Studies. But you know, um, you can say that is theory. They've been on the field for about three months, and upon the advice of the local government um, uh, institute, we felt that it was time to give them a refresher course. We'll meet with uh, experts in local governance, um, share ideas, and there are other practitioners, uh, former DCEs and other practitioners in the field also, to exchange ideas. So we are grouped them. We are four zones. The one we had over 200 people, 50 people meeting at you know, it's very difficult to imbibe many of these things. We divide the country into four, four zones. So this is the first one. Next week, this time we'll be in Sunjani, where we are meeting Ashanti, Western North, Ahafo, and Bono. Then we'll go to Tamale, Bono East, plus the five regions in the Northern region. Then we have Greater Accra, Volta, and Uti. We believe that these exchanges will uh, build their capacities, share ideas, uh, so that they can really deliver. At the end of the day, whatever government policy is, 
they are the chief representative of the central government in their districts. So whatever is being done at central government should also reflect in the lives of the people at the local level. And they are immediately in charge. You don't hand over such big resources to people and don't build their capacities. So it's important that, uh, that we do that. And continue. the same way we have a whole institute as a nation devoted for local governors of um, uh, service. We are going to do that. We are also going to train more and more with the association of NALAC, over the 6,000 assembly members. So also go through some training so that we know what is expected of them and what they are supposed to deliver. You know, Act 936, and let me say that we also want to get the media and other stakeholders involved to understand what Act 936 is. That's the Local Governors Act. For example, before you go to local I mean, assembly meeting, you should have met people in your locality before you attend assembly meeting. When you close for the assembly meeting, you should meet them and let them understand. When you do that thing, this whole business of people feeling that government is far away from the people will be reduced. So the people don't say it's government being present and the ministers. No. When you say local governors, each person down in a unique community area should feel the presence of government. And government is not necessarily a party in government. It's the whole structure from the unit committee up to the presidency. So that's why we are trying to build their capacity, what is expected of them. And as we just said, told them, in every quarter, we expect MMDCs to send a report to their ministry in all the areas of activity that have been assigned to them. How many times have you met the religious leaders in your community? How many times have you met chiefs who are the custodians of the land? In all the traditional areas in your district, DC, how many times have you interacted with them? How about the market women? Have you met them? Do you know their concerns? Have you explained to them why you cannot address their concerns at this time? What about the driver unions? The teachers in their district, have you met them? All other stakeholders. When you do that, then people can understand that you are trying to, as it were, interact with them, get the ideas. And when we are shaping policy, it should come right from the grassroots. And you are the chief representative of the government there. So it's not time for sermonizing. We are going to give the specific things that you should do. There's going to be a dashboard that all MMDCs will fill. And then we will know in real time whether these things are being done. And of course, there's going to be a monitoring uh, mechanism to let you know that these things are done. So that's what the whole thing is about, to help build their capacities, to also learn from each other. We brought people from, somebody has come from Afran Prince, somebody has come from Azim, somebody has come from Kaswa. Who compare notes? How did you uh, uh, solve this problem when I mean, you were confronted with that? Then they also they exchange ideas, all to build capacities so that we can deliver to the satisfaction of the people. We are, we are, we are, as, uh, we're entitled with them before this meeting that we are not going to ask them to do something without building their capacity. And that's not just their theory, but also to make sure that they have the resources to do that. Again, we want to understand internally generated funds. When they get them, how is it used? We are just a semi common fund that also comes. How is that money used? There are other interventions from other uh, sector, uh, even from development partners. These are all things that we're going to understand uh, uh, from them. And we are going to support them to make sure that we we'll build their capacities, give the sources to them to be able to, able to do these things, to get the interaction going on with the people so that we can be well informed. You know, if you're a government and you're not well informed as to the concerns and the aspirations of the people, which can keep changing. What people told that they were interested in in January, by February, uh, by June, they are interested in something else. And it's only your DCUs on the ground who can make central government know that these are the changing needs of the people and how to also plan to meet the aspirations of the people you govern.